Hi, so we're looking at the overall official game sheet put out by Viha, and we'll start with the date. Pretty straightforward, you'll fill that in, or rather the other team may have already, you may have to. Skipping over, you're going to see something called the game number. This is absolutely crucial and you need one of these. No game number, no joy. You could start the game without one as long as the manager or the coach uh, from usually the home team provides you with that number, but you really need it before the end of the game comes around, or again, there will be no joy. There are different sections to this score sheet, and I will go over them one by one to try and break it up a bit. So that's the introduction. Thanks. Okay, this is what I call the game day information that you need to fill out and over here it's the Oceanside Generals. Visiting team in this case was Wanda Fuca. Branch, BC Hockey played at. You would name this Oceanside place either Meeker or Kratz in the location, Parksville, BC. Type of game, uh, exhibition, league, playoff, tournament and down here we have the division and that's where you circle that. Generally speaking we don't have to deal with this and we can leave that as is. So that's just that sort of game day information that you need to know and place on the score sheet. Thanks. Okay, uh, one other thing that's kind of important. When you're filling out the game sheet, you're going to use something called the wall clock. The wall clock is found in every arena and should be visible to the uh, scorekeeper. And when the game starts according to the wall clock, that's where you fill in the time. Let's say the game started at 4.30 and it ended at, I don't know, let's say 6.15. And so you would put 6.15 when the wall clock indicates that the game ended. Again, you're going to get a game number and you need to be uh, filling that in. So that's the start and end of the game. On the left side of the score sheet, you're going to see uh, the home team, and on the right side, you would see the visiting team. This is where we give the team a name, so in this case, it's the Oceanside Generals, and here we have the starting goalie, the number, and the name. Uh, we would list the starting five, one, two, three, four, five, and then the rest of the players, again, with their numbers and their names. You'll also see that we've designated the captain, the assistant, and another assistant and that's important uh, to do that. Down below we're going to see the alternate goalie and in this case the number was left off. Really important to put the number on and I did in this case. We have the coach and we may have assistant coaches you can list their names or they would be included by usually the home team which fills this out. We have the manager, we have a safety person and lastly verified by and that would be uh, verified signed by a team official saying that all this information is correct. Once they do that uh, and the official or the referee takes it and starts scanning it, uh, if some of this information is not correct, then you can run into problems. However, as a scorekeeper, this is what you'll see. And uh, you don't really have to do very much here. In this case, the alternate goalie didn't have a number, and so I uh, put that down for them. Thanks. This is the scoring section, and as you can see here, this is for the home team. On the other side of the page, uh, on the right side, you'd normally see scoring, and it would say the visiting team. Number, so that's which goal was scored, the first goal, second goal, third goal, that sort of thing. The period, 1, 2, 3, or possibly 0 oh for overtime. The time the goal was scored, who scored the goal, and in every case that I can think of it's only going to be one player however on the assist there may be no players assisting you can leave it blank there could be one player assisting or there could be up to two players assisting so let's just say that number 10 scored and the assists were given to 6 slash 17 the official will tell uh, probably the timekeeper or it could be the scorekeeper depends where you're situated in the box I always repeat it back to the official and then he's going to repeat it to me just to make sure and then we would write that in. Pretty straightforward and I don't think there's much else to say. 
All right, this is the right side of the game sheet, and this is where we'll see something called the penalty abbreviations. And this lists all the penalties that can be called, and then it gives you a nice little abbreviation with which to fill in this box in the penalty section under offense. So let's just say it was period one, uh, player number 10. And in this case, player number 10 was charged with charging. So we would write in CHG. We would put the CHG in this box. Number 10 for the penalty. Number 10 served it. Let's just say the goalie had got a penalty for slashing. In that case, we would list number 30, but it might be served by number 10. Minutes, so two minutes. And when did he come off? Or we'd list that, let's say, at 15 minutes. And when did the penalty start? 98, 99% of the time, it'll be started at 15 minutes. And then when is the player on? That would be the number of minutes uh, from when it started. So in this case, it's a two minute minor. And so if it was 15 minutes minus two, the player would be on at the 13 minute mark. The only time that this is going to get a little confusing, and I'm not gonna go into great detail on this, is if we have more than two players on the same team serving penalties, we then get into what's known as delayed penalties. And that can get a little bit more uh, problematic and requires more of an explanation. We've blanked this out to protect the innocent, their identities, uh, but we can see that this was the visiting team, Juan de Fuca. And that's where we would list uh, any of their penalties. So that's the penalty abbreviations and the penalty section uh, of the game sheet. This is called the goaltender's record, and this is basically where we record shots on net. So uh, the number is the number of the goalie, and first period, second period, third period, if there was overtime. So we would record this, let's say it was 10 shots, 20 shots, and then back to 5, so 35 in total. And we would write that in this box. This obviously is for the home team, and this side would be for the visiting team. This is actually pretty useful uh, for coaches and also goalies like to know how many shots they face. What I tend to do is I have a blank piece of paper. This may not be something that uh, your first or second time person keeps up with, even though they should. Uh, I tend to have a blank piece of paper, as I said, and I'll put both teams at the top and then I'll put a line down the middle and then I'll go period one, period two, period three. And it's a simple four marks and then one through for five. And that helps me. And then at the end of the period, I'll go down to here and I'll list uh, how many shots for each goaltender. So there you go. That's the goaltender's record. Now let's just say that you've filled in everything that you think you should and have. Uh, the last thing that you'll probably do is as the official scorekeeper, you will sign your name. The official timekeeper or the person working with you will sign their name. And then you will check up on the game clock. Was there any time remaining? So let's say that we had a 4.30 ice slot and uh, we were a very slow game. There was lots of penalties. There was a variety of things going on. Who knows? Anyways, let's say that the game ended or the wall clock said, hey, you got to get off the ice. And so we ended and there was four minutes and two seconds left on the game clock. You would record that in this space here. Once you've finished your portion uh, of the official game sheet, you then probably roll it up, slide it through the hole in the glass, and you will give it to the referee who will print his name, her name, and they will sign it, as will the linesman. And then that is going to be placed in the box uh, outside the referee's room. So that's what's done. Uh, the very last thing you'll do is this, and then you hand it off to the referee. So this is my conclusion to looking at the official game sheet. Uh, we've looked at a number of sections or boxes, if you like. We have the home team, the visiting team. We have the game day information. We have scoring for both teams. Uh, we have the goaltender's record, and we've got penalties down the bottom. We've also got the, what I would call uh, the game officials and referees, the section that they have to sign. The last thing I just want to talk about is each game sheet should have five copies. And you'll notice that at the end of the game, 
Uh, once you roll it up and hand it off to the official, uh, the white copy goes to VHA, the green goes to the home team, the yellow goes to the visiting team, the pink stays with the association or OMHA, and we've even got another color, gold, which is a spare one. I think that's it, and hopefully this is useful or has been helpful to you, and uh, this can help you to do a nice, accurate, and non-stressful situation as a scorekeeper. Thanks. Bye.